For those starting your advanced biology course with this lesson, welcome. I'm Jordan Mifsud. I've been teaching biology since 2007. I was still studying biology back then. I don't know if you remember your first physics class, maybe in Form 3, or your first French class. Maybe you don't even remember what date was yesterday. But what I do remember very clearly is the impact that the first advanced biology lesson had on me. It was not about cells or vital functions, it was about water. It might sound a bit boring, but in fact water is a fascinating little molecule with quite a number of very special properties. Properties that make life possible as we know it. Nobody can imagine life without this thing. Well, actually, there are a few, num a few people who have postulated the possibility of life without water. Well, but so far, these forms of life exist only in their imagination, I'm afraid. Life as we know it, in all its diverse forms, in all its processes, at every point in the evolutionary history of life, water was always there mediating, facilitating, and participating in the chemistry of life. Now that we've mentioned the word, I'm referring to the word chemistry, as an advanced biology student you have to deal with it. Every fundamental cellular process is actually a complex chemical dance. So maybe you like chemistry, maybe not, but the fact of the matter is, we're going to start studying biochemistry as our first advanced biology topic because biochemistry will lay for us the foundations for advanced biological study. Let's get down to business, water. You know water, right? H2O. You think that you know water. But what does this mean? What does the formula H2O mean? Well, it means that every water molecule is made up of two hydrogen atoms and an oxygen atom. Basic. What makes them rem remain stuck together, though? What keeps those hydrogens from getting away from oxygen? Well, they're bonded, you might say. Yes, but what is a chemical bond? Is it a link? Is it a line? If you could point your finger there, if you could place your finger there, would you touch something? Is it a real thing? Is it a thing? A chemical bond is an attraction, an electrostatic attraction between oppositely charged species. And when I say species here, we're talking about species in a chemical sense. The kind of bond that there is between the hydrogens and the oxygen atoms is a covalent bond. The same kind of bond that is between the carbon and oxygens of carbon dioxide and within methane and a fluorine gas molecule. But in water, the covalent bonds are rather special in a way. You see, in a covalent bond, the atoms are stuck together because the atoms, and here we have the hydrogen and the oxygen, have a positively charged nucleus due to the protons that they contain and negatively charged electrons between them. So a positive charge here in the nucleus of the hydrogen, a negative charge here and another positive charge there, the nucleus of the oxygen atom. These three units the hydrogen nucleus, the electrons, and the oxygen nucleus are all held by electrostatic attractions because the hydrogen nucleus is positively charged, the electrons are negatively charged, and the oxygen nucleus is positively charged. We call this system a covalent bond. If you get hold of the oxygen and the hydrogen atoms and tried to pull them apart, you'd feel their attraction in the same way that you'd feel the force opposing you when pulling apart a magnet stuck to another magnet. So that's a covalent bond. Many molecules and compounds have covalent bonds. 
What's so special about the covalent bonds in water? Oxygen is a very electronegative atom, which means that it strongly attracts bonding electrons much more than hydrogen. We say that it has great affinity for the bonding electrons. So given the unequal attractive force, the unequal love these two atoms have for the bonding electrons, the electrons that they are supposedly sharing, most of the time the electrons are closer to the oxygen atom than to the hydrogen. Electrons are negatively charged. So you can imagine it, it there is a denser cloud of negative charge surrounding the oxygen atom due to its electronegativity. It's not a full negative charge. Oxygen in water is not O minus, but it is a partially negative charged atom. Oxygen within water is a partially negatively charged atom. While the hydrogens, having more of the opposite property, attracting much less those bonding electrons, they acquire a partially positive charge. The oxygen, a partially negative charge, and the hydrogens, a partially positive charge. We use the symbol delta, the fourth letter of the Greek alphabet. So delta negative here and delta positive there to indicate the different partial charges that the two sides of the water molecules have. So every water molecule has these two sides, or shall we call them poles? Poles, like the poles of a magnet. Poles of opposite electric charge in this case. This property of water having two oppositely charged sides, poles, is called polarity. Polarity, water is a polar molecule. The bonds within the water molecule are polar covalent bonds. The polarity of the water molecule is extremely important for biology because it gives water the properties that we consider as being essential for life, such as the property that water is a liquid between 0 and 100 degrees Celsius at sea level. All similar molecules are gases at those temperatures, or the fact that sugars and salts and an innumerable other substances can dissolve in water. These properties and others are all consequences of the polarity of the water molecule, which we will discuss in the next video.